a video today i am going to teach you computer application one of the subject for the icsc class 9 and as well as class 10 both can be benefited both class students can be benefited from this video so the first chapter is the very beginning for this uh, for this for this uh, subjects computer application that is introduction to oops concept okay so now i'm moving to the slides with the Start very beginning what is oops that we know all about object oriented programming it is new for all of us you need to know uh, what is oops basically it defined as object oriented programming concept is a methodology or a structure or way to writing a computer program based on the idea of objects to represent data and method okay this is all about definition you need to know about the OOPS concept. Basically, we know what is programming. Programming is an instructional uh, uh, set of instruction. Programming is a set uh, is a set of instruction. But those instruction, those sets of instruction, behave as a programs. Okay, and that program use some logics, use some real world uh, examples. So real world concept, real world the structures. So it is a type of uh, um, structure you may say that this is a de design, how to design a program. So it, you may say methodology or a structure or a way to writing a computer program based on the idea of objects. So based on the idea of object means whatever it present in the real world, all things are treated as objects. Either it may be in the form of living or non-living. Okay, so all the things which is present in the real world is said to be an object and these objects we are getting help and try to implement the program. So uh, implement uh, programs with uh, by using some language, programming language. So basically it is not a language. Try to make uh, very much clear about this. Oops is a methodology. Oops is a concept. Oops is a structure. Oops is a way to write the code. But this is not a programming language. This is totally a concept. Okay. So which use generally objects. Objects means whatever the present, whatever is present in the real world, all has been treated as objects. Okay. And each object must represent with its data and method. What it is, what is method and data, we will discuss all thoroughly in the coming up slides. Okay. Just stay tuned with this video. Okay. A small talk is considered the first truly object in oriented programming language. <coughs> a small talk is a programming language just like a Java. Earlier we have a small talk which is treated as the first truly object oriented programming language. Before Java, Python, some programming language was there which is treated as object oriented programming because we deal the programs while using the idea of objects only. Before objects idea we had some other concept which is procedure oriented programming concept okay so we will discuss further after um, after the slides okay so small talk is considered as the first truly object oriented programming language while after that after some moments we have c plus plus java python etc are the latest truly object oriented programming language in the coming up uh, uh, chapters we will do the program using this concept the programming language which we will use that is java that is all about Java. We need to understand from the very scratch. Okay, so basically these are the latest language which we have to use for the different purpose. But the concept which remains same that is object oriented programming. The real worlds, whatever you are doing for with the programs, that is all about uh, the, depends on the real world entities. Whatever the entities, whatever the entities means the objects. Whatever the thing is present in the world that is considered as object, we will do program as per the uh, given situation, as per the given problems. We will do and we will find the so solution. Okay, so first go through this small definition: objects. What is object? Because this is the, this is the concept which is totally deals about the ideas of which is totally deals about the objects. The ideas of objects we we need to know what is objects. Okay. Object is real world entity which has its attributes and behavior. Chair, flower, phone, dog, car, whatever is present in this real world, all is all has been treated as objects, and we need to work upon these objects. Okay, 
because object must consider or uh, must has its attributes and behavior what is behavior behavior is treated as method function because each object must have function and their attributes means their um, their, their their data what are the data color color of the dog color of the car numbers of windows these are the attributes and the function the function of this car function of dog means uh, bark is one of the function eating is the other function function of car means to stop to run these are the various function so we will discuss further after this slides you need to understand the basic okay. now moving to the procedure oriented programming versus object oriented programming what are the major differences between these two concepts okay we need to very much understand very much clear about these two concepts what is procedure object pro or uh, procedure oriented pro programming and object oriented programming first must be careful about this pop okay before oops we had pop before oops we had pop procedure object uh, procedure oriented programming so in procedural object uh, procedural programming program is divided into small parts called function we gave in pop the uh, most priorities uh, to function only the priority uh, priorities goes to function itself in pop while in oops after some decades a new concept arise which is oops object oriented programming in object oriented programming programs is divided into small parts called objects which we have already uh, go through the definition small definition of objects in the real world whatever is present that is called objects whatever is present that is called objects okay okay let's go to the next uh, uh, differences fortran algol cobol basic pascal and c these are the language these are the programming language which deals with the pop concept understood which deals with the pop concepts and the next one is java c++ c sharp python php javascript ruby perl swift scala these are the various languages which is a high level language and also some modern type of languages which came after these language after pop based language java c++ python these are the newest one these which are the newest one and truly object oriented programming concept these language use only these concepts okay which has based on objects and these language based on function okay next pro next point there is no access specified procedural programming so it is less secure okay just go through the um, uh, definition what is there there is no access specifier what do you mean by access specifier you will be able to understand properly in coming up uh, in coming slides okay so first you need to understood this there is no access specifier access specifier is a modifier you may say in procedural programming okay we don't have this kind of access specifier we don't have like private public private protected these are the access specifier which gives some security purpose okay which uh, which allows the user which allows the program to access the uh, access the attributes access the uh, method function from the class or from the program you will be able to understand properly from this slides properly okay so just go through this there is no such access specifier in procedural programming so it is less secure okay moving to the next points oops object oriented programming access specifier like private public protected etc is present so it is more secure so there is a presence of uh, access specifier such like private public protected so there is a security purpose for the security purpose we had this kind of things in oops so it is more secure okay next points procedural programming follows top down approach top down approach means the whole program will execute from the top of the program and to the towards the bottom okay next to the object oriented programming follows bottom up approach means the whole programs will start to execute from the bottom up from bottom level okay so these are all about pop and oops pop means procedural oriented programming and oops means object oriented programming this is all about the basic difference between these two concepts these are not languages these are the languages fortran algol cobol basic these are the programming language java c++ c sharp these are the programming language you need to very clear, uh, careful about this okay so moving up to the next slide principles of oops so basically we had gone through all the about the oops what is oops object oriented programming but the main principle you may also say features of oops the main principle of oops 
means the four pillar you have oops has uh, consists four main pillars oops consists more, uh, four ma main pillars like inheritance encapsulation abstraction polymorphism okay so we had main uh, four main pillars of oops inheritance encapsulation abstraction polymorphism these are the main concept included okay inheritance encapsulation abstraction and polymorphism these are the pillars of oops object oriented programming concept so we will discuss more th thoroughly for this so just go through this encapsulation the first one encapsulation means encapsulation in java is the way of combining both function both function and data so try to understand what do you mean by function function means represent behaviors okay it represent behaviors and data which represent characteristics or the attributes you may say together into a single unit for example a capsule which is mixed of several medicines so the you you are, you are seeing this one you are able to see this one methods plus variables means the data and method data and method means the function which it will work it will provide it will do it will work as per the as per the given function means um, method plus data so encapsulation means combining both of them combining both function and data into a single unit these are the single unit so this is called the class okay, for example which is mixed to uh, which is mixed of several medicine okay, it provides you control over the data in encapsulation in, is encapsulating it is encapsulating means it's hiding the details it's hiding the details but it has some method and um, some method means some functions and attributes so try to understand this uh, many important things um, like um, data you may say behaviors and also function uh, sorry uh, the method you may say uh, behaviors and function means behavior method function all three have the same meanings data next of uh, data attributes um, and characteristics all have the same meaning okay so you can represent by uh, any of them so it provides you control over the data the first point at this point it is the way to achieve data hiding in java because other class will not be able to access the data through the private data members so it is also provide some access control so data hiding in java uh, in java because other classes will not be able to access the data through the private data members so it is a way through which you can encapsulate any any of the any of the class you can absolutely encapsulate them okay with the help of methods and uh, data okay now moving to the next slides the, the uh, these photographs of this family you may understand this is called hierarchical because they are the parents of them the this guy parents is this one and uh, they are the child of uh, this guy so in the uh, in the hierarchical order it uh, in this way it have some this way structure class a means the parent a have two childs class b and class c means um, a father have two childs two brothers and two brothers get marriage and their childs will be divided okay will be uh, will be in separate class so these are the things okay hierarchical parents have two child b and c they may have two child also d and e c have me uh, c may have two child f and g okay in this way this is called hierarchical inheritance and the next one which is um, multiple inheritance so first you need to understand and uh, make a uh, make a note for this multiple inheritance does not accepted by java multiple inheritance is not accepted by java because of what multiple inheritance is such a kind of example of uh, or type of inheritance which is not supported by java until or unless we will we must use interfaces we must take the help of interfaces through interface we may achieve multiple inheritance just uh, uh, memorize this keynote for just don't don't need no need to go for the uh, multi interfaces right now just try to understand multiple inheritance does not supported by java itself because multiple inheritance means two parents are there two parents have the same child will you be able to see two parents have the same class no because how it could be able to um, uh, say that uh, that is the correct one let have assume we have we have two uh, two uh, two cars one is uh, one is um, a bmw and the other is hyundai so both have 
both have combined together and form some new one like BMW, Hyundai. No, it is not possible because two parents are different categories and they are unable to form a subclass, class C. So, one, uh, two parents, one child is not supported by Java, means two superclass, one subclass, it is not supported by Java, which is said to be multiple inheritance. Next is class A, half class B and C. Try to understand again hybrid. Hybrid means two type of inheritance combined together and form this hybrid inheritance. So means to say first one is hierarchical one. Class A have B and C. Okay. Class A have B and C means class this one. This one we are taking example. Class A have B and C and these are hierarchicals and it get combined with the this uh, with this type of multiple so both of them are combining together and forming a third uh, forming a hybrid type of inheritance this is called a hybrid inheritance which ha which is the combination of two type of inheritance uh, this is all about inheritance moving to the next slide so this is one of the next exam uh, this is one of the more ex one more example for inheritance the person this is a super class person which person you are talking about you need to understand inside in this person class we have a student and employee we have two categories both are the function both sorry both are the person so these uh, these two student and employee belonging to class person both are uh, person both are not vehicle both are not animals both are person this is called the main class means the super class and these are the called child class or the sub class you may say a student this is also a sub class this is the super class so it it is it is uh, just under this class under this super class and this is under this super class okay try to understand this is one of the class sub class it has again the same the two sub class means it student which type of students Many students are there. You need to uh, you need to design such kind of program to make them understand this is the subclass and also again it has two childs, IT students or math students. Try to understand this becomes the superclass again for these two, but it is uh, it is uh, still a subclass for this superclass. Means uh, pa parent class, child class, parent class, child class for this. These are the two child for this parent means to say this is the hierarchical order hierarchical order means this is the parents this is the child student and employee are the two child of parents and the students have again the two child it students and math students these are two child of students in the same order employee have two child a driver and engineer means the child means to say subclass basically person is a superclass these are the subclass a student is a subclass but it is again extended to IT students and math students, these are the subclasses. Employee have again extended to driver and engineer, these are the subclasses. So, these are all about inheritance. This is the hierarchical structure of inheritance. Okay, moving to the next slide. Try to understand the polymorphism. This is the this is a third type of uh, means not the third the, the third pillar or the principle of OPS. You need to understand what is polymorphism. Okay, I'm starting with polymorphism. What is polymorphism? So have you seen the form is changing? The form is changing. We have. Uh, I'm just. I have just attached the one kind of uh, pictures, which is uh, just uh, make you understand more, pro, um, more efficiently. Like this is the water. Then water change the shape into eyes, and again it will change somehow to like vapor. So means to say, the thing is same. The same things are same like water. You. So waters are changing its shapes. When it get melted, it it will again come uh, come back to the same shape uh, like water. So polymorphism is all about the formation, the change of form. Polymorphism is one of the principle of Pope's concept where once one name can have many forms. Poly equals to many. Morphism equals to form. That means many form. Okay, try to understand many form. One entity or objects may have many form it can work out in many form okay Ex explanation try to go through the explanation a smartphone let's have example for a smartphone a smartphone for communication the communication mode you choose could be anything you want to communicate with your friend you want to communicate with your friend what would be the way to get communication with your friend first one it can be a call by uh, by calling your friends you need to type the buttons and call your friends. The purpose is same, the communication. Communication means try to get contact with your uh, friends. Or you may text, the, uh, text him. 
text a message or a picture message or mail so these are the different form it can be called a text message a picture message a mail these are different form but the main things remain same to communicate our main objective is to communicate to communicate we can be uh, we can be able to call him or text him or picture message or mail him these are the different way we can choose it as per our need so the goal is common that is communication but their approach is different approach means through which medium we are getting those work out okay this is called polymorphism i have given one of example you need to understand mr john what is mr john doing just try to understand mr john behave like son with his parents the mr john this he is the same person but mr john behave like son with his parent when he mr john is at home he try to behave like a son because his existence is as son not as employee husband or father okay when mr john's behave like husband with his wife okay mr john behaves like husband means when he uh, he is with uh, his wife then he try to become husband try to uh, treat as a husband when he is with his parents try to treat as a son mr john behave like father with his daughter when uh, mr john meet with his child then he try uh, child or daughter then he try to be uh, behave as a father because their form his form is changing his forms are changing now mr john behaves like employee in office when he uh, when he used to go office then he try to become a employee his forms are changing but the person is same like mr john in the same way smartphone having the same form, uh, same names to communicate the main thing is to communicate but they are using different form like calling texting or mailing these are the different approach but their um, common goal is same okay to communicate just try to analyze these examples and definition to get more understand for this um, type of a uh, principle of oops polymorphism it is one of the most important concept of oops moving to the next slide morphism so you need to understand a bit of this types of morphism no need to go um, thoroughly for the method overloading or method overriding just go through this portion come you have two types of uh, polymorphism one is compile time polymorphism and the other one is run time polymorphism first one is compile time polymorphism is also called polymorphism static polymorphism we have example method overloading for polymorphism okay run time polymorphism also called dynamic polymorphism example method overriding just be with this definitions be with this type of polymorphism no need to go thoroughly for this we will discuss thoroughly after some chapters completed then you will be able to understand polymorphism uh, concept thoroughly okay just have a look these two types of polymorphism are, are there compile time polymorphism which is said to be as a static polymorphism the next one is run time polymorphism which is said to be dynamic polymorphism okay moving to the next slide the abstraction okay. you need to understand abstraction when we try to go atm um atm then we use atm machine so have you looked there a person is drawing the money so what is the the machine it's working this is all about it is um, it is hidden the machines are hidden what is happening inside this that we don't need to understand we don't have to go for this we just swipe the card and try to get the money from the machine we just do that work in a small interval of time we don't need to go inside the machine and try to uh, try to think the more deeply concept we are just using the machine we don't have to know about the internal internal operation okay so that is called abstraction just go through the definition data abstraction is the process of hiding certain details and showing only essential information to the user means to say lots of details are encrypted in the machine are consist um, um, are in the machine but the user don't require all the information at that very moment it just uh, it, uh, require the main function to hold on it abstraction can be achieved with either abstract classes or interfaces so how the abstraction get acquired so acquiring abstraction is the um, uh, is the next part we will discuss when we start a complete chapters based on abstraction okay so just uh, go with this data abstraction is the process of hiding certain details so look at this picture this is the car a person is driving car when he is try to get uh, try to uh, stop the car he try to use the brake uh, okay but 
when he is try to go inside the brake system how it is implemented there how it is designed there then it is a long procedure the driver don't required to um, to go with these internal details at that very moment because it will get accident okay so we need to we don't require these kind of internal information at that very moment we just require the main information we need to stop we just press the brake button we need to accelerate we just uh, we, uh, we just increase the accelerator okay these are the various Try, try, um, examples to need to understand for the abstraction it is one of the most important pillars of oops or you may say that the principle of oops data abstraction okay this is one of the examples a smartphone okay so how you try to use the a smartphone when you try to call your friends or your fathers then you need to just dial up the call uh, uh, dial the numbers and call your for parents or the, your friends okay so that is all about calling you need to chat with your friends you just text the message you need to play the games you just open the game app and start playing you don't require to go internal details how it is working how the uh, how the jumping button is performing how the left button or right button is performing you don't require this kind of information which is internal based you just require the th um, the operative operative function which which required is a small interval of time you want to click a small uh, keyword that need to be clicked at a uh, um, at a um, uh, very uh, nanoseconds or the seconds live. okay so these are the way you need to understand how the works make easier by using abstraction because let have an example earlier time we have the uh, we have the um, uh, hand hold, holding call like the receiver we have right now nowadays we have mobile phone there's a different uh, differences abstraction they uh, they achieve more abstractions in compared to the receiver they, uh, there we have we used to uh, we used to have like wired wired uh, telephone wired telephones and the receivers in this mobile phone we don't have wire so we can carry it anywhere these are the abstraction more and more abstraction achieving can be uh, can lead to more more uh, efficient device to be developed okay try to understand these all about for the oops these are the four main pillars of oops so now i am a small key points to achieve abstraction how you need to achieve the abstraction what is the method so you, you just keep this uh, uh, keep this uh, slide um, and try to go through the uh, point wise you will be able to understand when you will do the um, a separate chapter based on abstraction a method without body no implementation is known as abstract method so these are the various key points you need to understand but it is not uh, at this moment you require to go through okay so now right now for these chapters we will uh, we will discuss th more thoroughly about the java concept in the coming up slides okay so Thank you for watching my videos. Stay tuned, stay updated, and go through the books thoroughly. Go through the videos. Go through the each uh, slide videos thoroughly. If you are uh, if you are unable to grab the points which I uttered, so you need to just uh, decrease the speed of the videos through which you will be able to understand more properly. Okay, try to understand properly each slide. Okay, for your um, for your better understanding. Okay, now I am closing my videos. Thank you.